Hey Blender Bob here, I'm on vacation for one week and I will be able to do the most insane Blender Bob I have ever done. It's the series about where you tell me what you saw in a, in a movie and you want to know how it's been done. That's what I'm working on right now, but it's huge, it's big and it's taking a long time to do. But now I'm taking a little break to show you something that we worked on uh, for Moonfall. We did over 300 shots for Moonfall, but unfortunately for me, they were all compositing shots except for two scenes. So there was one with some lasers scanning somebody else and there were some cracks in the windows. And that's what I'm going to show you today. It may seem like something very simple to do, but actually not. That's it's simple once you know the formula. Uh, for the compositing, it's a little bit more crazy. Anyway, let's go for it. This is the plate. And this is the final result. So the first thing we want to do is to track the shot. And in this case, it was a little bit complicated because there's not much to track in front and most of it is out of focus, but we've been able to do it. The problem is that I will never get a very smooth surface because of all the end guns that are everywhere. And I could subdivide the model like crazy, but I don't really need it. So this is what I did. I had a geometry and I just cut the glass the way I wanted it. I did it manually using the knife tool. The client gave us some specific references on how many cracks they wanted and how big they wanted it and where they wanted it. So I could not use any kind of system that would automatically break the surface because most of them they use like a Voronoi pattern to cut the geometry and it looks like crap. And I really wanted the control so I had to do it manually. Once I was done with cutting the geometry, I selected all the edges and I deleted all the ones from the original polygon grid. So in edge mode, you click shift alternate and you just click on the edge and it's going to try to select everything that's aligned together. It's faster this way. There used to be an edge split in the menu here edge, but I don't find it anymore. I don't know why. So what I did instead was to do a search and I searched for edge split and there it is. To make sure that everything worked properly, I used the mesh check add-on and I turned on non-manifold. And what that does is if I select the geometry, you can see in bright green all the edges that have been split. So that's exactly what I wanted. If I select one vertex and I move it around, you can see the other ones from the other polygons right there. But if I select another vertex like this one where all the edges are black, you can see they're all connected together. And this is where the magic happens. If I select all these polygons and I extrude them, I can then delete the original flat faces and delete all the edges around them. And the only thing left are the cracks. And that's the trick here. I don't need to get the front and the back of the glass. I only need the cracks. If I select one of the polygons and move it, you can see there's a copy of this polygon in the back. Everything is doubled and that's what I want actually because I want to create a more organic look when I displace it. So now I will select all the polygons and just do a smart UV project. And this is what I get. Since the geometry is very light and I want to get a very nice detailed subdivision, I'm going to go into experimental and I'm going to use GPU so it goes faster. You can learn more about adaptive subdivision and using experimental in my first ever clip 1A that I, meant I did many years ago. The link is up there and in the description. It's about at the three minute mark. Shading wise, it's quite simple. It's a glass BSDF and I connected a mass graph texture into a displacement. And now I just need to play with the scale of the displacement and the scale of the texture to get the result that I want. Okay, so that's not so bad. But we need to do the lighting with the real environment, the real textures. We don't have an HGRI for that, but we do have the plate. So what I want is to see the plate going through the glass. So that this way we get all the colors, all the blinking lights and all these little tiny details that will reflect in the glass that will make it look good. And this is how it's done. We have a huge plane that's parented to the camera. We cannot see the plane because we turned off the visibility on the camera, but it's still visible in the transmission and the glossy and the diffuse. So if I turn it back on, you can see the image is updating as I move the time slider. The shader is quite simple. It's just an image sequence that's connected straight into the material output. You want to make sure auto refresh is on. We ended up with many render passes to make sure we would get everything we need for compositing. We even made another one that was secondary cracks like this one here. In the end, we didn't use it because it was covering too much of the plate. So it would cover the actors. We had a layer to accentuate the red in the reflections and the refraction. And we could use a crypto mat to extract only what we want. We had another pass to create highlights on the top. So it's not like we could just put the plate in the back and have the reflections and we're done with it. No, no, it's more complex than that. Now wait till we get into the comp. Well, you didn't have to wait too long because we're here already. 
All right, so in Nook, if you create a layer contact sheet, this is the best way to see all the layers that have been rendered in the EXR. And make sure you turn on the show layer names, otherwise it's kind of pointless, you just see images, but you don't know what they are. So now you have the names for everything. So when you do a shuffle to extract the layer that you want, you know exactly the name that you need. And now we have the plate here. There's a time offset to start it at 1001 and a frame range to say it starts from 1001 to 1211. I created a merge node and I will also create a shuffle node so I can extract which layer that I want for my EXR. Now that's a very long list, so which one do I really want? Well, let's go back to the layer contact sheet. Okay, so let's zoom in. All right, this one here, uh, beauty, primary cracks, beauty. That's what I want. Okay, so I go back to my shuffle node and I will select the beauty, primary cracks, beauty. Okay, so I want the A, the shuffle on top of the plate, B, and it looks like crap. So what I'm going to do is to change the mode here instead of over, I want to put it in screen so I can only see the highlights. It still looks like crap, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Okay, I made a little cleanup to organize stuff in a better way. I also added a pre-malt node because I know I will need it because I will create a mask now. And since that mask is going to be applied on the alpha channel, I need to pre-multiply it. That's the way it works in Nuke. To create the mask, you just press P and you get this rotor paint here. Now, I will create an area. I will just select this part here. I want to make sure that this will only affect the alpha channels. And Roto Paint here, instead of going RGBA, I just want to affect the alpha and I want the color to be black. And now you can see the difference it does with and without the pre malt. If I take it off, you don't see the effect. So that's why I need the pre malt. All right. Okay, now I needed these cracks to expand. So I could try to animate the mask as the camera is moving, but there's no way I will get a perfect track. It's never going to match, it's never going to be good. Never try to do stuff like this by hand. And the cracks appear with a certain rhythm. It's not like they just crack like this. They just go like boom, 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 boom. That's the way we wanted it. So I could not just do keyframe here, keyframe here, keyframe here. Otherwise it would be too smooth. But I do have this dirt pass that will be added on top of the windows that I could use as a tracking base. So I will create a tracker node and create a new tracker. I just need to select an area that I want to track. So I'm just going to get this black spot, dark spot here, just like that. And I just need to press play here to track it. So now I'm tracking it forward. Then I will track it backwards to make sure I cover the entire area. Okay, I got a perfect track. It's working well. So now what I need to do is to create here, if I go into tracker, I want to create a match move so that anything I would connect to this will move the same way. So I create this and I got this node that just been created here. It's a transform node. And here I have the coordinates in X and Y. Okay, now I will go back to my roto paint here and I will connect the translation to my roto paint, but now it's grayed out. That's only because I didn't select the Bayesian curve here. So now I got my transform here and it's all at zero. If I take this, press control and drag it on the little icon here, now the animation has been transferred to my curve. So now if I move, you can see that my roto is moving with it. So an offset has been created, but that's okay. I will just readjust my mask. In Nuke, you are always in auto keyframe mode. So if I move the mask, it's going to keyframe it automatically. You can see it's blue here. That means it has a keyframe on it. So now I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to add another keyframe at the exact same place. That's because I don't want a smooth interpolation between one frame to another. I want it to go bang, 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 bang. So now I got this so I can move back one frame and then move my mask again. And same thing again. Okay, let me adjust it a little bit. Just all right. I will move again back in time add another keyframe and same thing that I repeat again and again. Now I move one frame back and I adjust my mask. Same thing again, add a keyframe, blah, 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 blah. And now if I play it back, you can see it goes bang, 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 bang. But this is not the way I did it before actually. I tried something in 3D. So I thought I could use a mask modifier to reveal the cracks as I'm moving it or scaling it. And the way to do this is to select the geometry and you add a dynamic paint. And this dynamic paint we want to paint is the weight and want to paint the weight of a vertex group. The vertex group is actually coming from this geometry here. If you select uh, in vertex mode, if you come here, you can create a vertex group and you assign everything in it. And uh, that's how you create your vertex group. If I go back here, then you make a mask and this mask is going to be influenced by that same vertex group. Now, how do you modify the vertex group? while well, you do this with the sphere. So if I select the sphere, it also has a dynamic paint, set it as a brush and you're good to go. 
After that, the concept is the same. You just create a keyframe and then you do your animation the same way I did it in Nuke. So I will go here, copy the same keyframe again. Then I need to move one frame, do some changes. So let's say I will scale it. I, well, I will put it in auto keyframe. It's going to be easier this way. So I scale it. Then I copy this keyframe, the last one, and I duplicate it. So control D, just move it here. I stretch it, change another frame scale again i got some refresh problems here that's because i'm working at the office and it's remote ah covid 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 okay duplicate copy and that's the way it is so you can go boom 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 turns out it wasn't really practical because if the client said well i want more cracks i want them faster i want this i want that then i would have to reanimate everything re-render everything publish everything bring it back into the compositing re-update everything so it's much faster to do it in 2d so everything you can do in 2d that's faster than 3D, just do it in 2D. And also I need to color correct it a little bit. So I will add a gray note under the shuffle, just press G and change the gamma a little bit. And here we go. It's already starting to look like broken glass. I added a Z defocus node so I can blur the image because everything that comes out of 3D is too sharp and also there's depth of field. So the Z defocus will use the depth fast and it will blur the image according to the distance. I actually made a little setup here to show you the difference between a Z blur and just a regular blur. So on the left you have the Z blur, on the right you have the blur. You can see that the Z defocus actually creates a bokeh effect, not just blurring the image. And that's why we want this. Okay, so that's a very cheap and fast version of the comp. This is what I call a pre-comp. And this is what we do in the 3D department. We just assemble the elements to make sure that it's, it works. It's kind of a proof of concept if you want. Then it goes to real compositing. And it's a little bit more complex. This is what it looks like. So yeah, not as simple as it looks like. There's tons of stuff. Actually, the dirt maps and everything has been generated directly in Nuke. So that's why it's, it looks a little bit more complicated. There are many windows also. We added stuff in the back windows. We added stuff in the front windows. We added stuff everywhere. I just did an entire blender bob with not a single joke in it. I guess I really need that vacation.